Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show on WSPA. As many of you know, I was uh, an educator for 25 years before I actually got into this business. And uh, this next guest, uh, I'm always interested in education and uh, and kids. You know, and and I still coach kids, so I I really uh, enjoy different points of view on this. Mark uh, St. Just is a former educator, uh, founder of Get Me Me Kids. Get Me, Me Kids, a movement dedicated to engaging children and bringing wellness and love to kids worldwide through books, games, and movies. He's also a songwriter, uh, author of My Neighborhood, the first book in the Get Me, Me Kids series, which it kind of reinforces the power of positive perceptions, community pride, cultural diversity, and goal setting. And you can also check him out at uh, GetMeKids.com. And Mark joins us this morning here on the Gary Sutton Show with this subject, Mom, Nobody Likes Me. Ever hear that one before? Good morning, Mark. How are you? Great to have you on the show. Yes, good morning, Gary. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. Uh, I I wanted to get to this today. I I saw this topic, and I thought, wow, this is one I think every parent has heard at some point in time, maybe. Uh, And the idea that Mom, Nobody Likes Me, or Dad, Nobody Likes Me, Talk a little bit about that this morning, and what kind of got you into this uh, this whole area. All right. Well, uh, just mom, nobody likes me. Dad, nobody likes me. Usually relates towards it's the beginning towards uh, a child possibly getting bullied or finding or developing a lower sense of self esteem, and that happens for whatever reason. You're too smart in class. You didn't hit the ball right out on the field for various reasons. You know during time that may happen to a young child or even teenager. And so when I got into the school system in the early 90s teaching at Deerfield Park Elementary, I was teaching fifth grade and dropout prevention, so a lot of my children were identified as um, possibly if they continued along their academic path, they would drop out by middle school. And I noticed one of the key issues that they had was, oh, Mr. Saint, we're the dumb class. You know, they had already identified or believed in themselves that they were not as smart as the other students. So in order to help them, I developed this Get Me Me property, um, basically teaching the kids, well, listen, you've got to develop your own sense of self-esteem. We can't wait on the world to tell us, hey, Gary, you look great today, Um, because many times you won't get that from the world. You as an adult are one thing, but a young child developing and learning about themselves, that's even more critical that they get positive reinforcement on a daily basis. And that's where Get Me Me is basically stating learn to love and take care of yourself so that you can love and take care of others because you can't give in this world what you don't have. So we had this mantra of seven positive sayings that my kids would recite verbally with me every morning to help um, help them feel better about themselves more um, actively. What were the seven sayings you'd use to start the day with? Um, well, first, I give thanks for living, and we have to make this world a better place to give love and get love from the entire human race. We'll read and listen to acquire knowledge because we know knowledge is the key to open up the door for me to this world of prosperity. Always respect others, and we must respect ourselves because with so many different opinions, it's needed for health and wealth. Maintain a positive attitude towards everything and everyone because fear and negativity will never make life fun. There's no such thing as failing, so we know we can never fail. If we stumble, fall, get a bump or bruise, that's just part of the learning trail. Take ourselves to a higher level and always get me me, because once we can help ourselves, we can help our community. I know I will succeed because the journey of success is part of me. I'm a winner in my mind, and that's all I've got to be. And then we'd recite, I will succeed, we will succeed. And we'd go through that 180 days of the school year, Gary, is required, required rhetoric in our classroom. So. Hats off to you. Uh, yeah. Hats off to you. That, I mean, that is really a great way to start the day. I, I, I love that. And obviously, you said it a few times. You've got it kind of embedded in you. But I mean, that really, I mean, that covers everything. And you, you're starting the whole day. I, I, I can only imagine a Monday morning stepping out there as well as every other day. But a Monday morning stepping out there and, and sitting down and saying, hey, here we go. You know, uh, let's get it started. Uh, I can't tell you how how important I think it is to to have a positive attitude. You know, starting your class with a positive attitude every day. I mean, that's really important. You talk about the fact that this mob nobody likes me really does start at kind of a young age, and that's where we really have to catch it, right? Absolutely. Well, I think it's um, what we 
Well, we're able, if we're able to set a good foundation for children in their psychological formative years, ages, you know, pretty much birth through six, seven, eight years old, it's many psychologists, you know, say that's who you become as far as your personality is formed during those early years. So it's like trying to bring in anti-bullying and, um, you know, uh, I'd say curriculum in middle school or high school, you're kind of a day late dollar short for right. that, you know, and that's why I say get them while they're young, set a good foundation, and then um, it makes life much easier. What could happen to kids who, who don't really feel like they belong? Well, um, you know, on on the worst side of the scale, Gary, we could, you know, talk about Columbine, talk about the yeah. young man up in, you know, um, Portland, in, you know, Oregon right. last week at the junior college. Those Unquote, the college, worst yeah. day, Sandy Hook, you know, that's, that's those are extreme um I think those are the extreme consequences we pay when people feel disenfranchised, not loved, or just completely, you know, not connected to anyone. Love and belonging is a critical is a critical element that we all need, and that's why gangs here in Los Angeles are able to proliferate the way they are by finding young men and women and that just feel disenfranchised, no sense of love and belonging. So, the the list of negative things that can happen go on and on, and then suicide for children as well. You know, so that's um, it's unfortunate. I don't like focusing. Those are the problems, but I like focusing on. So, what's the solution? Right. The right. solution, I think, is. We need a, we're worried about, you know, science scores, reading scores, math scores in school. We should also be worried we need a curriculum of love also within our within our classrooms. Talk about, talk about a curriculum of love in the classrooms. Obviously, what you, the little say that you have there that starts the day uh, talks about that. One of the things I most like about that, I, I've talked to educators before, and I disagree with them because uh, many of them will say, uh, well, you know, reactions to bullying uh, – and, and their solutions usually are that the person is to be going about uh, things as a victim. Uh, and uh, you don't talk about victims there. You talked about, uh, you know, self-reliance and independence, too, if I heard that correctly in the beginning. And obviously the teacher is there to help make sure that you're not a victim. But you don't want everybody feel like they're a victim all the time. Otherwise, they become a very dependent kind of person instead of independent. Would you agree? Right. Absolutely. I think so. And I think that's where you bridge the gap there and, 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 and you know, kind of balanced it uh, by what you your kids are saying every day the way you're teaching but how can how can parents and teachers you know really help get that feeling of belonging because i you know i went to school i'll give you a, a hit here mark i went to school my dad was a principal you want to talk about bullying uh <laughs> you know i just i mean i probably won about half my fights lost about half my fights i got jumped by five people one night because my dad was a principal and my brother right. and sister ended up not going to the same school because of that but i feel like I had a good experience and I enjoyed it and uh, not those parts, but, you know, every time I'd feel like, well, geez, I was the victim, uh, my dad, my mom would say, no, 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 you, you know, you've got to, you got to fight through this. You got to do some things. And, and yet I, I know what that, the temptation is to kind of uh, come under the thumb of bullying it is like. Right. Right. Well, I think, um, you know, Gary, it reverts back towards you had the right reinforcement and balance in your life right. to kind of counteract um, that in your parents. And being your father being a principal, he's also, I'm sure, well-versed in education and, um, you know, was cognizant. I, your parents were cognizant and actively involved in your well-being. Um, the reality is sometimes that doesn't always uh, translate, and it's not about socioeconomic status, right. all, you know, always. It's just you have some parents in Beverly Hills, for instance, they've got so much wealth that they're just, you know, throwing money, giving it to the nanny, and there's still no sense of love and belonging in the children. Right. So it's not about just the children within the lower socioeconomic status, but then you have children who don't have parents and fathers in jail mothers led on drugs or something and those kids without they don't have that um reinforcement that safety net which you had there for you right. know when you didn't feel right so and if you don't have that safety net of good parenting at home or a good caregiver then you know that's where i think the responsibilities educators don't want to hear that but it falls back on us because we're the kids spend more time with us in some instances than they do with their parents. You're right. 
You're right. So, that's that's, that's that. something I realized when I was teaching, too, sometimes. That, you know, you think two-thirds of the day is spent with the parents of them, and yet at the same time, maybe this is the one place that they come where there is some solace and where there is some caring about them that maybe they're not getting sometimes in a home situation. And that does happen, unfortunately, in our country. Right, right. I uh, absolutely agree. If a, if a kid doesn't feel loved, uh, you know, we hear a lot of people talk about self-esteem. How, how can that impact their self-esteem in the classroom and at home? What kind of manifestations do you see that, uh, you know, coming out in? Well, it, Gary, that's, um, if, if somebody doesn't believe in themselves, doesn't feel good about themselves, well, it impacts, it impacts their ability to learn. It impacts um, what they feel they can accomplish in this word, uh, world, and it's great to sit there with rhetorical things. Read to achieve, be all you can be, you know. <laughs> the but, cliche um, fests, right? Huh? The cliche fests. Right. Right. Exactly. But you have to make those those comments tangible to a child. They have to feel a sense of importance. And when my when my kids in my classroom realize that I was holding them for detention, mind you, I mean Broward County probably have a fit over this if they heard it now. But I would if you weren't reciting the get me me pledge aloud verbally in the morning, you know, then well you'll stay with me after school and we'll right. write it out a few times. But you know, nobody we didn't have to go to those lengths, but I made it required so that kids would and they would grasp and understand the importance by telling themselves, I will succeed every morning, you know, even for the kid with the worst kind of self-esteem felt a little bit better that, about himself, and it made him feel more capable of learning things. And, you know, it showed that, hey, Mr. Saint really cares about me because he's trying to help me feel better about myself so I can be a better me. We're talking with Mark St. Just, uh, who is uh, the head of Get Me Be Kids. You can check him out at GetBeBeKids.com. We're going to come right back and talk a little bit more about education and what people could do in terms of uh, using books and games and different things like that as well. And some people are saying, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. Well, maybe not so much. Let's find out from Mark St. Juice when we come back on what he's found so far and some of the successful results he's seen using books and games and movies uh, and how to use those and incorporate those and in getting kids to uh, be me kids. Because by being me kids first, they can be we kids second. We'll come back and talk more with Mark St. Juice right after this. The Gary Sutton Show on News Radio 910 WSBA. Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA. Mark St. Just is with us this morning, a former educator and the head of uh, GetMeMeKids.com. And Mark, how have you found, you know, cause I, you, you know, we all go through education and we all see the latest trends and people are jumping out there, open classrooms, oh, team teaching, all that kind of stuff. All sounds nice. But one of the things that seem, you're, you seem to be talking about is more is how do you take a lot of these things that people put out there? They think the thing somehow is going to educate when it's really how you apply whatever you do with love and concern for the kids. Uh, you use books and games and movies. Talk a little bit about the people, about how you use those kinds of things and how they've worked out for you so far. Oh, well, yeah, Gary. <clears throat> Utilizing games and entertainment um, within the classroom, it's just uh, the music that, we, you know, I wrote the I'm Too Good for Drugs song. is just as a supplement to the D.A.R.E. program, which they were instituting, um, that they were doing in my classroom. But it was just because the D.A.R.E. officer came in, he had this song, Smoke is no joke, really cool kids won't try it. It really wasn't engaging to the kids. And right. I was like, yeah, they'll sing it now, but they're they're not going to sing it after school, you know, <laughs> so it doesn't really serve It's it not that total. You know. walking out of the theater, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> right. So I was like, you know, let me record something that's a little more commercially viable and something the kids will bounce and dance to that will actually transcend the walls of the school. So it's content, you know, that they're utilizing by using games and music um, and film. It it provides you the educational platform is able to transcend the schoolyard, which is important. Then whatever messages, be it self-esteem, be it math, history, you know, the kids are actually playing, you know, actively engaged in educational content beyond the school. And that's critical as far as they're, for me, I believe it's, um, it can have a huge impact because they're still being educated as we all are. We're educated through the entertainment that we consume. So if you can make things that are viable, you know, really truly entertaining and a lot of things I've seen from, you know, from the better lack of the word, you've had teachers trying to make entertainment content, which comes off as kind of lame in some aspects. Right. And that's where 
I was a DJ, I was a songwriter, producer before, long before I was into education. I started a record label when I was a sophomore at Florida State. So I was able to organically kind of incorporate my love and joy of music into learning. Um, and that's where a lot of times you don't have that true organic bridge that's happening. You know, when somebody's an educator as far as their chosen profession and really dedicated and they're trying to write a script they're trying to you know utilize music if that wasn't their first passion they may not be able to create something that's going to organically i would say engage kids so it's important to make sure that the content's engaging for the children you know one of the things that people would say as they're listening to sport and i'm just being devil's yeah. advocate for a moment yeah. mark because they would say you know we're kind of in a B generation right now that's too much of B, where we say, uh, geez, the selfies, the selfie sticks, all these kind of things out there. Uh, you know, the only thing we're missing is the theme music we're walking out in front of us as we're walking forward, uh, that we have a lot of this kind of thing. How do you stay away from that kind of B to the kind of B that is able to be healthy and say, you know, I really, I'm really pretty proud of what I'm trying to do here. I'm doing it the right way. Uh, I think there's a difference between the two kinds of Bs that we're talking about there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. Most people, when they look at the first criticism some of my friends had, get me, me, Mark, is it really necessary? Me, me, me? You know, isn't there enough of that in this world? Um, but, the, the Gary, the thing about get me, me, it's basically in a critical that people understand. It's learning take, love and take care of yourself so you can love right. and take care of others. It's you can't give what you don't have. And my best illustration is when you're, if you flew out here to Los Angeles, they're going to tell you at 35,000 feet, hey, if this plane decompresses, Press Gary, and you could be flying with your granddaughter, your little son. <laughs> right. If this, if there's no, you know, if the plane decompressurized, you take that oxygen first. mask first and put it on your. Despite the fact you could have an infant baby gasping for oxygen, right? Because you can't give what you don't have. So it's critical, I think, that people learn how to love and take care of yourself. You have to learn that first before you can ever learn to love thy neighbor. You know, you're absolutely right. And I, I think, you know, I, I remember a pastor once giving a sermon. He said, you know, if if you're riding the pony uh, to deliver the mail, the old Pony Express days, he said, the pony dies, mail's not getting delivered. Uh, you know, and it, it was a great point to be made. And, and same thing here. And I remember uh, uh, a guy doing kind of the funny thing about the the oxygen mask dropping down. He said, you take those margarine cups, you put it over your face first, and then you pick out which kid you love the most and do that second. And, and you know, But it was, the idea is, you know, you've got to be willing to uh, get out there and be able to help them right now. Where can people go for more information on this, Mark? Because I think it's a fascinating subject. I think you're on to something here. Right. Well, getmemekids.com, G-E-T-M-E-M-E, kids.com. And um, the My Neighborhood Kids book is there. The actual, on the back of the book, actually, I think, was uh, the Get Me Me Pledge we actually published so that any teachers or parents or mainly the children themselves can actually read and recite the pledge if they choose. So, But everything's available at getmemekids.com. Mark, really appreciate the interview this morning. Great time and, and, and really good stuff. Keep up the great work out there, okay? No, thank you very much for the time, Gary, and I appreciate you inviting me on the show. Mark, thanks again. We'll talk soon. Take All care. Right, have a good morning. Mark St. Juice with us here on the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA. Get me me kids. Dot com. Be proud of yourself before you can jump out there and anybody else can be proud of you along the way. Not a bad way of looking at things, is it?